I'm going to talk to you uh, just an introduction about the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development. This is on behalf of Alan Evans. He's not able to join us today. So why do we have a UN Decade of Ocean Science? The motivation behind this has many layers, and I'm sure everybody here recognizes that there's an increasing environmental pressure on our ocean from things like increasing warming, ocean acidification, sea level rise, deoxygenation, and all manner of anthropogenic impacts, whether it's things like plastic pollution or overfishing. A healthy climate is really vital for a healthy ocean. The Paris Climate Agreement stipulates that we shouldn't have more than 1.5 degrees centigrade rise in temperature. So you can see on this graph on the right that if we carry on emitting all the carbon dioxide at the same rate as we are now, we're going to end up with between three and five degree warming. And at the moment, we're emitting over 37 gigatons of carbon dioxide a year, which is massive. So carbon dioxide emissions need to decline rapidly to net zero by the middle of the century to be able to be at the 1.5 degrees C target or below. So that's reducing carbon dioxide emissions by one to two billion tons every year this decade. Now, one positive thing that the COVID-19 pandemic has shown us is that the halting industry and transport reduce fossil fuel emissions by 2.4 billion tons. So to put that in perspective, we need to run the world on a COVID type uh, carbon emissions to meet this target unless we do more things with technology and really change the way that we live. Right now we're living in a time where there's increased recognition of the value of sustaining a healthy ocean, not just for environmental reasons, but also for society and economic reasons as well. Given this, there are a number of studies and associated reports that highlight a need to have a more focused but global approach to address ocean affairs. So you can see we have assessments on warming, on ice, on fisheries, and also just studying ocean science in general. In addition, we have various agendas and frameworks that exist to try and manage primarily sectoral activities on and in the ocean. So things like SOLIS and MARPOL, which concentrate on shipping rules. But really, the main thing we're going to focus on is the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And in particular, SDG 14, which is life below water, which is to conserve and sustainably use the oceans, seas and marine resources separated into a number of targets, including conserving coastal and marine areas, increased scientific knowledge and research, increase economic benefits from sustainable use of resources, reducing pollution, and reducing ocean acidification. Given all of this, it's now also recognized that the economic value of the ocean is significant. And the economic value of the ocean is estimated around 3 trillion US dollars. However, the investment to support such a sector is really small, given that it's estimated that global funding of the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Committee, or the IOC, is 3,000 times less than the commercial value of the ocean. So to measure all these different places in the ocean, we're spending a tiny amount of money in comparison to how much those resources bring to us. We can see the same disparity again against all the sustainable development goals. We can see SDG 14 down here with the fish, and it's actually the, the lowest funded goal out of all 17 of them. However, there is growing awareness of the pressures and issues and the need to better manage the ocean. One way in which we're doing this is increase, we see an increasing number of global initiatives bringing attention 
to the plight of the ocean, as well as how we as a global community can work together to address these issues. So we have different organizations working together, we have different governments working together, charities, and also just international days like World Oceans Day. And my favorite was a couple of years ago and it was the International Year of Coral Reefs. So it's really encouraging to see that this message of protecting the ocean, protect us, is coming from beyond the science community but industry, government, NGOs, and local communities are all getting involved in, in these events. In order to provide the necessary evidence required to address the various issues, the IOC, um, the IOC was established as a competent UN agency for ocean science services, observations, data exchange, and capacity development. They decided to work with UN agencies with an interest in the ocean to provide the necessary data and evidence required to address the various issues of the ocean and to support efforts to reverse the cycle of decline in ocean health and create improved conditions for sustainable development of the ocean. So at the moment, there's over 149 member states that have signed up to this. The IOC already has in place mechanisms to develop parts of these needs. For example, the Global Ocean Science Report attempts to capture the level of engagement and investment in ocean research, as well as the demographics of people who are involved. Whereas the IOC's capacity development strategy is already capturing the needs of developing states and its capacity development and transfer of marine technology guidelines. So here we have an example from the first Global Ocean Science Report. And this graph illustrates the area of a country and it's been scaled and resized according to the number of ocean science publications it produces. So we see a higher number of contributions from more developed countries like the UK and less contributions from developing countries. So the CME program is working on addressing this imbalance by transferring knowledge and technology to small island developing states in the Caribbean, South Pacific, and of course, collaborating with stakeholders such as yourselves. I do recommend checking out this Global Ocean Science Report. The new one was released in December. Um, be aware, it's quite long to read, but there's lots of really great infographics in there. After the first Ocean Science Report was published, the member states of the UN at the UN General Assembly agreed that a decade of ocean science was required to make things more even across countries. So in 2017, it included in the omnibus resolution for ocean science and the law of the sea, that the ocean decade was created. So that was a brief overview of why we have a decade of ocean science. And now we're going to talk about what it actually is. A roadmap was developed which outlined the goals, objectives, and research priority areas. Plus, it included details of governance arrangements of the preparation phase. An executive planning group, which was made up of 20 global leaders in ocean science, was also established to provide guidance as to the way forward and support the IOC undertake the preparation phase. The roadmap was used as the basis for discussion at regional and thematic workshops. These were carried out in different regions across the globe to try and capture the varying needs of different regions because obviously not everybody needs the same science or the same assistance. So over one.